Hello, uh, we're going to go over how to create a rector rule for a Drupal rector and show how that can be added um, and then run on an example code to show how Drupal rector can update that code. Uh, all right, uh, what we have right, right here is an example file uh, called format date and this shows an example deprecation. We're using PHP storm and this shows the format date with a strike through which indicates in PHP Storm that that's a deprecated method, or sorry, a deprecated function. Um, we're going to show how we can create a rector rule to replace that automatically, um, or using using that tool. Um, all right. So the first thing to do uh, is to create an example of the deprecation, and then we're going to run after we create our rector rule. We're going to run that rector on this file, and we'll see the changes. Uh, that it would make. So this deprecation um, format date, uh, you can see that it's deprecated with the strike through. You can also kind of hover over it. If you click on it and hit F1 in PHP Storm, you'll see a definition for what uh, that deprecation was and kind of why it was removed. Um, and we can see that the only required parameter is a timestamp, uh, and it'll kind of create a formatted string from that timestamp. Um, we've also created another example that shows how that might be used with all the arguments if you passed in a type, a format, a time zone, and a language code. So creating these examples, um, you know, takes a little bit of, of exploration. Uh, the first step is usually kind of typing in the name of the method, and then it'll show you a strike through, and if you hold down command and click on the method, you'll come to the definition in PHP Storm. Um, or you could do a find for function format date to find the definition that way. Uh, and this gives you some information about it and kind of what the recommendations are. Uh, if we look at this one, what we're going to be doing is taking a function and replacing it with a method call on a service. Um, and you can see those different arguments here and the required values and, and non-required values. Um, if we look up the definition for the date, the format method on the date formatter, service, um, we can see that that has the same set of uh, parameters or arguments for the method. So the method arguments and the function arguments are the same, we're just changing what is being called there. Um, all right, so there's one more piece of information here which is useful, which is that this was deprecated in Drupal 8.0.0, uh, and we'll keep that in mind for one second. So. The first thing to do is to create this example file. Once you have this example file, we can kind of test that it's working, um, that the rector is going to work. Um, we've added this to the, in the Drupal rector module, we've added it to rector examples. Um, we have the sim link for our development environment, but this would normally be in uh, the custom modules directory. Uh, the next step is that we're going to create a rector rule, which is a class, and that class exists in Drupal Rector, Rector Deprecations, which is in the source directory of uh, Drupal Rector. And then you can see that there's already a bunch of uh, Drupal Rector classes there. And this basic um, template here has, you can copy it from one of the other ones. It defines the class with that namespace. And then right now it's extending this abstract rector, which is kind of the default. Uh, it's underlining this and it's saying that this isn't really valid because we need to implement three methods, uh, which we'll cover in a second. Um, so we have this class created. The next thing we need to do is we need to uh, kind of register it. So the way that Drupal rector registers or rector registers things is in configuration files. Um, so we had in this deprecation, it de was deprecated in 8.0 in the Drupal rector config Drupal 8 folder there is a deprecation for each of the minor versions of Drupal. So if we look in the 8.0 version, um, we've already added a line under services that has the fully qualified class name, um, Drupal Rector, Rector, Deprecation, Drupal Rector as the key. And then the value is this null value, a tilde is a null value in YAML um, to just indicate that we're not really doing anything special with it. We're just uh, saying that you should call this uh, class by itself. Um, there are some advanced features which you could use with values here, but we're not using them. All right, 
So we've registered the class, we've created the class. Um, right now it's not a valid class and it's also not doing anything. Um, so to make it valid, we need to create those three methods that I just mentioned. So these methods are, um, you can use other, other of these uh, as examples or you can kind of copy them. Um, you can look up, a, uh, copy and paste them from other examples. So if we look at uh, Drupal sent message, for example, um, it has this get definition, which is the first one of these. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that in here. So get definition, first we need to kind of have a use statement for rector definition, so we've done that. And we also need one for code sample. So we've done that now, and that's added two use statements uh, above. In PHP Storm, if you kind of delete the last letter and start typing again, it'll pop up uh, that little completion thing for you, which is pretty helpful. Um, otherwise, you know, you can look them up from other examples. All right, so the definition has three parts. Um, it has the, well, it's returning a definition object, which has a description. So let's update the description. So the description right here is it's going to update deprecated uh, format date calls. And then it has code sample object, which takes a before and an after um, string, basically. So we have the before code, and we're going to look at our example that we have and copy that over, because that's good enough uh, for now. And then we have our after code. So let's just paste this in for now. And then if we look at the deprecation um, or the implementation of the method, we can see that you know it says get the service and call date format. So we're going to copy that uh, here, and that's what we're going to basically replace our code with. So let's go back and add that here. So for instead of format date, we're going to call Drupal service and get the date formatter service and then call the format method on that. All right, so we have one of our three methods. This is just kind of for documentation. I don't know that it's actually used for anything. Uh, the next one we're going to do is we're going to add a get node types. So this is public method, or sorry, public function uh, I can type uh, function uh, get node types and this is going to take no arguments and it's going to return an array and let's see all right and the all right so it's going to take no arguments and it's going to return an array and let's add uh, the inherit doc here, because there is documentation from the class that it's inheriting. Okay, so get node types is going to basically allow us to filter which nodes this rector rule applies to. So let's look at, um, let's look at the documentation for, uh, for rector. So Drupal rector is built on top of rector. And there's this documentation page on their website or on the GitHub repository, Rector Docs Node Overview. And that includes a whole bunch of definitions for what these different node types are. So nodes in Rector are pieces of PHP code that are parsed as created as objects and then kind of dealt with and re then recreated as the code in the, in the file. Um, so examples of those, as you can see, each one of them has the name and then examples and what the properties it has are. So uh, not sure what uh, array dim fetch is, but um, some of these ones like an expression assignment has some variable and then some value assigned to it. So this whole thing is an expression assignment, uh, is an expression assignment. So if we look for one that's similar to what we had, uh, I happen to know that it's called a function call. Uh, so if I look at that, you can see that the example code looks pretty similar to what we had. So we need to, um, to only act on node expression function call classes. So this returns an array, so we're gonna return an array and then we're going to get the class name for node expression function call and return that. 
Okay, so this is going to now say uh, we are only going to uh, we're only going to act on function call nodes, and any function call nodes should be processed by this vector. So the next method that we need is we need the refactor, which is going to do the actual refactoring. So let's do um, let's do our inherit doc, uh, and then let's define our method. So this is a public method, or sorry, function, um, and this is called refactor. And this takes a node and returns a uh, a node, or it returns an empty or a null value. So we are going to get that function call node, and we need to act on it. And if you return a null value, uh, it indicates to Rector that we didn't do anything to the node, and it should just know that we didn't do anything to it. Um, all right, it doesn't know what a node is, so let's add a, uh, a use statement, and we're going to add, oh, it used the wrong one. Um, so our use statement is PHP parser uh, node. So that is something different, but now it should know what these things are. Okay. So yeah, we're going to get the node. If we don't do anything, we're going to return null. If we do something, so if we do something, then we're going to return a node. Uh, that's the basic structure. And so we're going to get all function calls, but we only want to act on certain ones, so we need a way of filtering it. So the way we're going to filter these is we're going to check the name. So if we look at the documentation um, Again, then we see that there's two things. There's the name of the function, and then there's the arguments. So those are two things that we have available to us uh, here. And arguments is a, you know, it tells you what kind of a, an object those are. All right, so there's a helper method in the class called um, getName. And if you pass the node to that, uh, then you will get the name for it. And we're going to check if this equals the method that we're using, which is format date. So that's our conditional. We're only going to act on format date methods. Uh, we're going to add one more thing here to kind of indicate that this is a function call. So we're going to say at var node expression uh, function call and node. And that's helpful because now we can do more auto completion on node. Uh, PHP Storm and other IDEs will kind of know what that node is. Um, more specifically, that it's not just a node, but it's a, specifically a function call. All right, so the thing that we want to return in this situation, so if we look back at what we're doing afterwards, we need to return a method, and that method is going to include some other stuff with it. So let's go, uh, we, our node equals new, we're going to create a new object, and we need to figure out what that's called. So we can go back to the documentation. I happen to know that it's called a method call. Uh, and if we look at a method call, it looks pretty similar to what we were doing. There's a little bit more to it than that, but it's this arrow uh, method name. And that takes a variable, or it has a variable, a name, and an argument. Um, so let's go back to here, and we're going to create a new method call. And PHP Storm is helping us and telling us that we need to pass in a variable, a name, which is the method name, and the arguments. And we can pass attributes, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, all right, so we need a variable, we need a name, and we need arguments. Uh, let's see, what did it call that? Oops, let's see. Args, okay. All right, so the there is, and we're just going to make it null for now. The name is null, and the uh, args is null. All right, so that's kind of the framework. We're going to have to construct a variable, a name, and an argument, and then create our new method. Uh, arguments is probably the easiest one. If you remember from before, we had a node args. 
and that's the simple one. We're just going to keep all the same arguments and we're going to pass it to our from our function and we're going to pass it to our method. Uh, name is pretty easy as well. So name says this needs a node identifier. Um, it could also be an expression or a string. Um, this is the name of the method, but we're going to use uh, an identifier. So we're going to say new identifier. And then this identifier takes as an argument, it takes the name as a string. And so our method name, if we go back and look at our example, is format. So we're going to pass that in. All right, so now we have the method. So we're going to call format with the arguments, and we need to call that on something. Uh, so this is a little bit more complicated. So now we kind of have to figure out what is this. So this is something that's a, a little bit more. So it's kind of a combination of things, right? All right, so the first thing that it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a call. And this, this call is going to be something that's called a static call. So uh, that's listed in that, that uh, documentation that we showed before as well. But I just have looked it up already. Um, so we need to say we're going to create a new static uh, call and we need to know what we need to pass that. Um, oh, sorry, let me... It's a new static call, okay. And then we need a class, we need a name, um, and we need arguments. Um, so it's kind of similar to what we had before. Uh, so the class is going to be um, an expression or a name. The so let's let's just kind of put a placeholder here. We have the class. We have the method name. Um, all right. From before, we know that we can we can pass in an identifier. So we can say uh, the method name is. It could be a node identifier. So we can say uh, new identifier. And we can say that this identifier on this method, if we look above, is going to be service. And the arguments are going to be an array of argument nodes. So we need an array and we need a new uh, arg. And that argument needs uh, that argument is going to eventually represent this date formatter. Uh, so let's copy that. But we need to... Um, so node args takes a value, and the value needs to be an expression. Um, so one way to, get, to make a simple expression that's just a string is to call a... Uh, there's a string class. So we can say new string, uh, this is not filling it in. All right, so I have, I've looked it up before and it's called node scalar uh, string. And that, now that we finally got down to there, um, we can pass in the string that we have. All right, so to take kind of a step back and, and review some of that, we haven't filled in the class yet, but we've created a new static call, which is uh, the service. We've said that the name of it is service, and the argument to it is date formatter. So that's kind of this part, the colon colon part. So the last part that we need is this slash Drupal. So that is the name of a class. Um, the slash part indicates that it's a fully qualified class name. So I'm going to also paste some stuff in here. I happen to know um, what that is. And so the one that we want is we want something called new, uh, let's see, fully qualified. And that can take a string uh, or it could take a name. So let's just pass in uh, Drupal. All right. So now we're going to call that service on the Drupal class. A fully qualified knows that it's slash Drupal. 
Um, and so this, this total thing, this variable here, is building this whole part of it. Uh, and then the method that we're returning is this format piece. So it kind of works backwards. So if you looked, we built, we're returning format, but format requires this whole thing that we're calling it on. This thing requires this piece, which is the method, uh, and it requires some other things like the class and the, the arguments. So all of this together, um, we have the name, we have the arguments, we kind of have all those pieces. All right, so let's save it. Um, we've, we've created our get definitions, our get node types, and our refactor code. We've registered it in the 8.0 file, um, and now we should be able to run it. So let's go into our code, and we can do uh, vendor bin uh, rector, and then we're going to call, so that's the, the file, and then we're going to call the process task, uh, and we're going to call it on the file that is web modules custom rector examples and then what was the example we had was um, just called format date .php, and we're going to use the dry run flag so that we're not actually going to apply the changes we're just going to look at them and this should run uh, unless we've made some mistakes which we can fix and it will tell us what the changes would be All right, so it could not find that scalar string that we defined that it was having issues with before. So let's see what issue we might have, what mistake we may have made there. Um, okay, so... Okay, I had one too many... Uh, underscores. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so it says rector is done. One file would have changed dry run. If we scroll up, we can see that the format date, uh, it's kind of, it looks like a git diff. It says that, hey, this is the, the file that would have been changed. Um, it is that file that we created. It has the old code and then it has the new code and it did it for both of our examples. So that's that's excellent success. Uh, all right, so at this point we could basically be done. Um, we have some other pieces of the project where we're kind of keeping track of things, but that's, that's the basic part of it. You have a rector class, um, you define that rector class or you fill out that rector class with those three methods. Uh, you register it with a configuration file, and then we create an example file in the examples module so that we can see that it's working. Um, if you were going to run this on your actual code, you would just remove the dry run flag, um, but usually during testing it's helpful to have that dry run tag. Uh, yeah, so the last piece that we can do is we have all this code, and it's it's something that if you're looking at it and you're thinking like, okay, this is probably like a repeatable pattern. There wasn't anything too complicated with that. Um, we have created base classes. So this one specifically, uh, we could do much more simply because we have a lot of the code in here in a base class called function to service base. And so function to service base takes a function call and replaces it with a service method call. And then it has a few properties. It has deprecated function name, as a service name and a service method name. And then with those three variables, or sorry, three properties, uh, it has that code that you just saw that we created. With get node types, it's the same for all of them. We're always acting on functions. And then the refactor code looks like what we just did, except it's using those properties. Uh, yeah. So if we were to make a new one and we didn't want to go through the doing all of those pieces, um, let's delete a lot of that. Um, so we don't need the get node types anymore, and we don't need this refactor code because we're not we're going to use it from the base class. And we can instead of using the abstract rector, we're going to use our base class, which is called function uh, to service base. So now that we have that, um, we don't need these two use statements, so we're going to delete them. And we 
are missing some things. Well, it's not going to tell you that you're missing them, but we are missing a few things. So we can go back to function to service base and we can copy uh, these properties from it. And then we just need to define these properties. So let's paste them in and then define them. So the deprecated function name is uh, format date. That's pretty simple. Uh, the service name that we're going to be using is called, if we go back to uh, the example, it's date formatter. So let's copy that over. And the service method name is going to be format. So let's copy that. And now that we're using this base class, we've defined those three properties. Uh, we've defined the, the definition. And that's pretty much it. And if we go back, uh, unless we made a mistake, we should be able to run this command again. And it should do the same thing where it updates those uh, examples. So yeah, it did that. So yeah, if you're looking to develop rectors with Drupal Rector, uh, that's, this is kind of an overview of how you could do it both using a base class and kind of starting from scratch. If they're very simple rectors, the base classes might already exist. If they're things that are more complicated where you need to explore different variables and maybe change some of the arguments, uh, you might need to implement all three of the methods yourself. All right, um, yeah, well, thanks for joining. And uh, if you would like to learn more about it, we have some information on Palantir.net and the Drupal, um, the Drupal Rector project is on GitHub and also has a page on Drupal.org. All right, thanks.